I don't know what they're smoking over there at Princeton. The focus on ridicule. I'm white and I've got everything I need. No one clutches their purses when they're in a room alone with me. And I can drive for any neighborhood I please. At any hour, and the police don't do a thing. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I got everything I need. I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree. And I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me. And I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee. Just like my straight white male dad did to me. So if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. I've got a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking under ladders and I'm spilling tons of salt, but to me that doesn't matter because my skin and my gender and my orientation are the best things to have if you live in this nation. I recommend it highly. See a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I got all the luck I need Hey everybody, welcome to the Intellectual Dollar Tree We do the show live every uh, Wednesday at 7 Except for when we do it at 9 because it's a million degrees out uh, you can support this project at uh, patreon.com slash echoplex, but there's a better way. It's eplex.store. Uh, they also, there's also a bunch of merch there. We have a new uh, shirt there, the uh, fantastic crisis actor shirt that uh, a certain uh, lawyer who uh, may have taken down Alex Jones might have been given one as a gift. I don't know. That's what I heard from uh, someone I know. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know. I'm producer Dave and I am the best streamer, even with only one arm. And I am HK Perrin. Uh, I am the second best streamer, but I have both arms. So I mean, I still have both of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so last week we did uh, one of the Weinstein brothers. So you know what? The other one of the Weinstein brothers is doing all these victory laps because he found somebody who believes in crazier math shit than he does. <laughs> <laughs> So Eric Weinstein, uh, famously or whatever, infamously, uh, had to go on Joe Rogan with Terrence Howard because Terrence Howard was like proposing a whole new periodic table, uh, apparently based on chakras or something. I don't remember. I didn't watch that shit. Um, but also saying that one times one cannot equal one because there's two ones there and it has to equal two. And <laughs> And we're not wow. going to watch that because I have enough problems right now. I don't need Joe Rogan fucking filing a copyright claim against against my fucking against Squarespace, right? Like, fuck. I, my understanding is he's rather litigious in that way. Um, but don't worry. Uh, Piers Morgan never, <laughs> never, never, never one to not chase some kind of weird one times one equals two ambulance. Uh, had Eric on to, uh, I don't know, do a victory lap, I guess, about... Um, being less crazy than Terrence Howard. Yeah, I know you hate it. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go. Everything has an equal and opposite. It has to mate. Whoa. I'm and trying to get you to stop pissing my community off. <laughs> 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 What community is that, Eric? I mean, there's some portion of his audience who's just pissed off that the guy is black and talking on a popular podcast, but I don't think that's what he means, right? Uh, I think it's very sad that Eric actually has a community. Like, it just means his fans, right? 
he certainly doesn't mean the science community because he uh, he, <laughs> yep. he said the focus on ridicule. <laughs> I know he was talking about Sam Cedar, but he was also quote tweeting like every scientist right there. This is going to be great watching like because Piers Morgan is just going to be so far up Eric's ass in this. It's going to be hilarious. Oh, also, like at the end, they bring on that Tom Billyu guy who does impact theory. The guy who's uh, we've watched him. He does interviews. His uh, there's a lot of blue in his background, and he's like probably around my age. And his podcast studio looks like a 14 year old boy's goon cave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's keep it to slightly unhinged science fiction. I-, I wouldn't have been able to appear with Terrence if I didn't think there was something in what he was doing. The platform. Wait, what? to be accepted for I believe the, the proper term is, is masturbatorium Dave <laughs> masturbatorium. not social media <laughs> Neil himself doesn't appear conversant in the history of science and reviewing it's 10 times easier to produce something that's BS and so then yes yes Brian Keating that is true unfortunately <laughs> you when you you tried that and they didn't give you the Nobel Prize and then you grifted on to it. Refute it science has a branding problem if you're arguing I wouldn't even say it's level. like 10 times e- it's like millions of times easier to produce something that's BS. Well, it just depends on how complicated the truth is. Like, you don't have to be smart to produce something that's BS. This, so is, like, the, this is the guy I was talking about whose studio looks like what a 14-year-old's ideal goon cave would look like. I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> not enough computer displays, but you know, he's doing a show. The specifics of the science you have already lost. Science has become a pagan faith. <laughs> a pagan <laughs> thing? Fuck Interesting. Yeah. Fuck yeah. We should get more scientists on Thursday. <laughs> We're standing up in good standing as experts doing the job that now Candace Owens is going to fill. Trust the science became a mantra during the COVID pandemic. But in the years since, and partly as a consequence, a rising time Only during the COVID pandemic? Like, that's been a mantra for, like, scientific. decades. Like, it's how your phone works, it appears. Yeah. <laughs> Trust the science is just about like, you don't have to understand how something works. Just like understand that the people who do understand it are telling you that it works. Right. And that those people are willing to uh, update and upgrade their uh, their position on any almost any and everything with better and new information. Not each individual, yep. mind you, but as like a community. Yeah. Otherwise... Otherwise, like everybody would just have to invent a phone every time that they wanted to make <laughs> one. Scientific mainstream is in vogue. No resist better illustrated than the recent viral phenomenon of actor Terrence Howard on the Joe Rogan podcast, the biggest media platform in the world right now, arguing that one times one actually equals two, among other bizarre theories. They don't if one times one equals it. two, then one times one equals literally anything. Sure. Because that would mean that one equals two. At which point you could say like any number equals any other number, right? But one is right next to two when you count, HK. ...has the same tone Correct. As, as carbon. What do you mean by tone? Same tone, ki- same key of E. You the key of E? Like, ah. Uh, oh, I'm tone what? deaf, never mind by a dj it's in the key of e the numbers the fucking the periodic i don't know one of the things on the periodic table apparently uh is uh, tuned to the key of e how does he get that i they're showing too much of the joe rogan podcast we might still get fucking nicked for copyright lighting <laughs> light by two and you'll ultimately get back to the audible sound of it. Wait, what? There was a relationship between light and color. Sound. I hate it when titanium screams at me in the key of D sharp. Sound <laughs> and tone, matter and shape. At a given point, Mars was here in the Goldilocks zone. Everything has an equal and opposite. It has to mate. Uh, mate Mars is in the Goldilocks zone. Do. Yeah, that's what I thought. I wasn't going to say it because I wasn't sure. But um, yeah, I think it is. I think it's just like the other factors made it not earth yeah so it was too small to maintain its uh its like internal uh liquid core so it lost its magnetic field and then the sun stripped away its atmosphere and that's why it doesn't have any water and now it's just a slightly worse climate than arizona (laughs) 
<laughs> the, car, the, um, the boron mates with nitrogen, and that's how the carbon happened. 96% of physics is unknown matter that they've had to make up to account for it, and we were able to build Saturn. Man, don't turn my phone. We were able to build... Is he talking about dark matter? Like, Saturn... I assume he means the Saturn V, the rocket, is not made out of dark matter. That's I, I like entirely made out of matter, actually. I would like to believe that he means that we just invented the planet Saturn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. Maybe that is what he meant. <laughs> I mean, the fucking, it could be either of those things. My understanding about dark <laughs> matter is it's not like, it's just like a placeholder for some um, gravity. There's dark matter and dark energy, which in... in for all intents and purposes, just just op operate as placeholders for things that we don't understand at this point. But they, they yeah, that, and it could turn out that that's not even true. That there's some other reason. Yeah, it may turn out that the things that we thought we understood work differently. So that thing actually isn't there. We have like pretty good evidence that dark matter actually is a thing, um, but we don't understand what it is. So yeah, we call it dark matter. He's like, oh, they just made it up. I mean, sorta, I suppose. But then at this point, uh, just uh, applying a, a, a name to anything is arbitrary. Yeah, like made it up in that we saw evidence for it and we named it. Oh, no, don't do that. Every oh, no. time I get ready, well, because I know they're watching me right now and they're mad at me. Who's that? <laughs> yeah, the, they, they could be anybody, right? It could be the Jews. It could be fucking the space aliens. It could be you and me. It could be fucking... Could be the Weinsteins. Maybe it's the Weinsteins. I think, I think maybe he means Apple, and that's why his phone isn't working. Like Apple computers. Um, the politicians and the authorities that give the politicians their accreditation. And our world economy is based off of one times one equaling one. So you think they fuck with your phone? Oh, I'm sure of it. Whoa. The world this economy like is based on one times one equaling one. I mean, yes, that is true, because one times one equals one. Hold on. I'm getting big, like targeted individual vibes off this guy. Do you know what, uh, like a tar You know what that means? Like where someone, no, I don't. where someone believes they're being like electronically gang stalked. Okay. Where they, they, it could be anything from like a, they believe that a weapon, uh, some kind of like, um, LRAD type weapon is being used on them, or they could mean that like people are literally following them around. I mean, he did just say they are watching him. Right. That's what I mean. I'm getting like targeted individual vibes off this guy. Yep. Well, there were four hours of that, uh, but it's reached tens of millions of people. It's been a true viral phenomenon, like I said. Well, many in the scientific establishment expressed alarm at the apparently limitless reach of wild theories at a time science has a reputation problem. Professor Neil deGrasse Tyson that's the most famous scientist. science doesn't have a reputation problem science has a people are ignorant problem well but that's i mean your reputation isn't necessarily true right like for a long like you know what i'm saying like so what they mean is that people like eric brett sam harris to some extent basically all the idw perverts plus like other covid people have been running around saying nobody trusts scientific institutions anymore because i don't know okay. they, they were not a, either they basically have been running around nirvana fallacy in public health for fucking five years now four years four and a half years something like that and so that's what they mean when they say reputation problem is that like people who there are people who are just conspiracy theorists, but the, those are the end users, right? I, I like I like to now use the term mm -hmm. that people that like weaponize uh, propaganda uh, for profit. I like to talk about it that way. Those people are trying to get people to believe that there's a problem with uh, science more broadly, but uh, there there generally isn't. Um, it's uh, as nope. flawed a human institution as it's ever been, and that's fine. I'd say, if anything, science has gotten more able to uh, correct its own flaws in the past, like, 50 years. Well, sure, sure. But, like, as Peter Thiel would tell you, we haven't done anything in the last 50 years. Oh, yeah. No progress at all. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a fan of a subject, let's say, a hobbyist, let's call it, it's possible to know enough about that subject to think you're right but not enough about that subject 
to know that you're wrong. Platform <laughs> That's to be correct. Accepted yep. for the ideas is not social media. It is not Joe Rogan. It is not my podcast. It is research journals where attention can be given on a level that at the end of the day offers no higher respect for your energy and intellect than by declaring that what's in it is either right or wrong or worthy of publication or not. Well, others disagree. They argue the old system needs to be shaken up. They're questioning and challenging. Yeah, but the yeah, reason but who are the others? What are their credentials? I mean, they're, they're, he's talking about Eric Weinstein, and the reason they disagree is everybody made fun of. The reason he disagrees is everybody made fun of him when he claimed to have unified physics, <laughs> and then yep. denied him and his brother, and possibly uh, his wife and his brother's wife, all the Nobel prizes that they deserve. So, by others, he means like Cranks. a handful of people. Cranks. Versus like the millions of people who work in the scientific industry or this scientific, uh, yeah. not industry. What would you call it? Yeah, Community? I mean, you call it industry. Sure. I mean, okay, yeah. we, we just, I'm, I'm not, we're not going to quibble there about the fact that a public university isn't necessarily industry. We could do that for the next 15 minutes though. I'm sure everybody would fucking <laughs> love that. <laughs> Mainstream institutions and theories is the only real way to actually get to the truth. Here to debate this, the podcast and cosmologist at University of California, Professor Brian Keating, host of Impact Theory, Tom Billier. But I'll start with Dr. So, uh, okay, so first of all, like Brian Keating has some scientific credential, right? He's a professor mm -hmm. in the sciences. Uh, Eric has a PhD in math and physics. Uh, Tom Billiou, uh, uh his credential is sold snake oil, got, got very rich. But he's a, he's a podcaster. So am I. Oh, but people actually watch his show. Eric Weinstein. But podcasters are the are just like general experts on everything. Uh, what are they? Polymaths. Yeah. All podcasters are just experts on everything. Especially the things that they talk about on their podcasts. Right? An OG of the That's what I've been told. Web and creator of the portal podcast. Well, oh, Eric calling him the saying he has the portal podcast is bullshit. <laughs> he posted famously that he needed a lawyer. Um, that was well versed in internet defamation. Otherwise, he could not continue the portal. So that means I think he wanted to sue Sam Cedar. <laughs> Welcome back to Uncensored. Uh, really fascinating to see how big this has all blown in in the last few days. For those who didn't watch the Terence Howard four hour, um, I don't know what you would call it, theory a thon. Let's, let's be kind. Um, it's called an interview. Uh, I wouldn't even say they were theories, like theories in the colloquial sense. Sure, but, but, like, I, but, but, but can we call it an interview, maybe, instead of theory a thon? That's what that, it was just an interview. Uh, freak show? Would you call it a freak show? Sure. What were the sort of main premises he was coming out with that have captured everyone's attention? Well, I think that the. Um, he made several outrageous claims that were not the same as my outrageous claims. Less baseless <laughs> as far as uh, either the heterodox or the orthodox view of science, that uh, one times one is equal to two, that the periodic table uh, should be rearranged around uh, earlier work from the 1920s. Um, that he had a theory of physics based on platonic solids with curved linear sides. Uh, I don't think any of those hold up to any kind of scrutiny. That right, Eric, but the, you're not the right person to be saying this. Yep. That's, that's the thing is you're the absolute, this is why he's so giddy that somebody else is saying way <laughs> whacker things than him about science. Yep. This is just the pot calling the kettle black. Right, right. That said, he uh, definitely has some very interesting engineering claims, and he's got some very interesting geometric structures that could make beautiful lighting, fantastic art, and he is saying some things that people... <laughs> he, he made some cool um, shapes. Like MC Escher. <laughs> Such high praise. In, you know, from a, from a scholarly perspective, that actually have some merit. So it's a very it's a very bizarre and complicated situation, but it is not complicated at the root. 
there's nothing wrong with standard orthodox science, and I say that as a very strong critic of the system. So if you, if you wanted to hear it from somebody um, you know, with a PhD who's nevertheless not shy about savaging the institutions when that is what they deserve, I would say that the level of doubt. What do, what do you think? The, do you think the average physicist even knows who the fuck this guy is? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> only I, like terminally online physicists know who this guy is. Oh, and I bet they have jokes about him that we would not understand. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he is cast on simple things like arithmetic. Um, is completely unwarranted, but it's a very bizarre situation to watch an entire nation that depends on technology and science for its advantage uh, suddenly question whether or not one times one equals one. What is fascinating to me is is I mean, is it is I, is that even surprising at all? The other like, thing is there are flat earthers who use GPS, like GPS, the system oh, would on. not work. The assumption the here were flat. The assumption here is all the people that viewed it believe that the shit the guy was saying. I think it got like fucking Yeah, true. I think it got like he I think it was more like a lol cow. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was passed around because it's ridiculous. Yes. Um uh, I'm sure there are a small group of people that believe in that though. Right, right, but it's like the Madison Star Moon effect where she blocked everybody who didn't agree with her and then all of a sudden nobody was watching her videos anymore. <laughs> right like it's, it's, i don't think i don't think it got passed around because people were like you know this guy's onto something i think they got passed yeah. around by people who don't understand drugs who said this guy's probably on something <laughs> but i don't know what drug makes you believe that it had anything to do with terence howard i interviewed him at cnn about 10 years ago when he did a movie about the tuskegee airmen and the next thing he's doing a four-hour podcast with well, that was 10 years ago it wasn't the next thing peers it was just the, the next thing that you noticed he did other things peers the world does not revolve around you peers morgan the next thing <laughs> 10 years there was I, I guarantee you a lot of things happened <laughs> you might have even had an interaction with him between then peers joe rogan in which he's airing the most sort of intensely complex theories many of which as you say might be completely for the birds um no no even the birds aware? don't believe in that also, the theories, the hypotheses. What would you call, like? Let's spend a lot of time. Uh, let's spend a lot of time. Let's spend a lot of time talking about what theory means. Yeah, the pre-falsified hypotheses that he's talking about here, uh, like they don't make sense. They're they're not complex. They just they're nonsensical. There's like a big difference here that I don't think Piers sees between complex and nonsensical like you can not understand something because it's complex and you can also not understand something because it's just batshit crazy the two are not mutually exclusive i suppose so yeah i mean you eric says things that sound complex that are complicated and are fucking bonkers too yeah you're right actually yeah and that Terence Howe was was thinking this way, was moving to a place where he could even conduct an interview like that. Well, to be honest, uh, I didn't know who Terence Howard was, uh, so I didn't have a, an image for him. But had you asked me, I would have thought back to uh, Werner Herzog uh, doing the entire film Fitz Corraldo to test his engineering theories about how less technologically advanced people could move heavy objects ma uh, many miles um, up up hills. He mm -hmm. created an entire film to test his engineering theories. Mm -hmm. uh, slavery, Eric, slavery. Hedy Lamar. Uh, I feel like famous. if you are going to go on to a podcast with someone that is going to reach literal millions of people, you should probably understand who else is on that podcast. You know, do like maybe Wait like a minute. No, 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 just no. an hour so hold on. of research on them hk what eric said is before the joe rogan interview with terrence howard he didn't know who he was there was a subsequent time that eric went on with joe and terrence howard they were on at the same time there were two i promise oh okay i promise okay. you are not at the bottom of any of these rabbit holes you were over there <laughs> okay. you were off over there on port 87.social
You're not at the bottom of any of these All rabbit right. holes. There were two. The first one was just Joe Rogan and Terrence Howard. The second one was Eric coming on. And let's be honest, he didn't even do a good job of dunking on him. He did not. No. ...developed spread spectrum technology. Um, despite being a screen siren back in the 30s and 40s. So just as I don't think it's very strange to find out that Steve Martin is an incredible banjo player, I don't find it at all odd mm. that a polymath like uh, Terrence Howard would have such theories. I Wait, no, no, no. This is a polymath. No, 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 no. That means you, it means you're a well-versed in things. That doesn't mean that like you're an actor and then you made up a bunch of shit about a bunch of other things. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's not a polymath. That's, uh, I, I'm like, I'm telling you, man, I think that the target, I think he's a targeted individual. I think that's like at the root of his thing is the targeted individual syndrome based on like what I saw from Terrence Howard, really good vice thing about uh targeted individuals actually that, um, I guess now that vice is bankrupt, maybe we can run it during the post game. <laughs> I think that the theories about math and physics and chemistry are incredibly deep. So I'm going to push back on that. Mm. Um, but I do think that uh, he knows quite a lot about many things and he doesn't know what he doesn't know. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson said that he, he, you know, people can know enough to sort of ask questions and stuff, but maybe not enough to know when they're wrong. In other words, when they're presented with... That is incorrect. That is not what he said. I mean, it was close enough. They know enough to think that they're right, but they don't know enough to know that they're wrong. That's sure. what he said. Sure. And I mean, that's just a Dunning-Kruger. Yep. Is the more you learn about something, the more you know that other people probably know more about certain aspects of that thing than you're ever going to know, actually, which is fine. <laughs> Again, yep. Totally fine. Well, like it's, it's not about asking questions. It's about thinking that you're right. Sure. But like the other thing is now, now with conspiracism and stuff, I'm just asking questions is a lot of times what somebody will say after they've made declarative statements. Yeah. Science that has been peer reviewed and is de deemed to be established scientific fact that he doesn't know enough about the detail to understand why he's wrong to question it. Well, he's not wrong to question that. that yeah, you're, 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 you're actually, you're, you actually, you were, you were kind of on the right path here. He's not questioning. He's making assertions. Yep. Which is different than asking a question. You're like, oh, why isn't, <clears throat> you know, why isn't one times one, two? And then I guess somebody would have to explain to you that when you multiply something by one, that's literally just one of the fucking thing, which is the easiest fucking math concept to understand. Hey, if you yep. have one of these, how many do you have? <laughs> you have one group of one of those, right? <laughs> how many is that? I have one <laughs> box with two phones in it. How many phones are in the box? <laughs> yep. <laughs> that in Kruger effect, as yeah. Neil said. Yeah. It's kind of ironic, actually, because it feels to me like Neil deGrasse Tyson is himself a victim of the Dunning Kruger effect when it comes to peer review. As Wait, what? His <laughs> comments about. <laughs> anyone listen? Anyone listening? Go. Look at, look at, just go, just try, try to find Eric's peer reviewed work. Just go try to find HK. Please don't. I need you as the co host here. I'm not at 100% today. So, but anyone listening to the podcast or watching live, go, go, just go look up Eric's peer reviewed work. I, I dare you to find it. I got to say, that was, that was a very funny line. So I assume he's not joking. I assume he's like, you know, he's being serious and that makes it even more funny. So the re the problem here is it's I call it I also, I, I call this we're not going to get through much of this at all in an hour and a half I call this the Bill Nye the science guy problem that people have right where Bill Nye is a science communicator Bill Nye is has an engineering background right that's he's perfectly good mm -hmm. at what he does no problems but he's not out there claiming that he's like revolutionary revolutionizing science nor is Neil deGrasse Tyson Neil deGrasse Tyson has his own set of problems but um. We're not going to get into those right now. Um, me too. Uh, but he's he runs a, a, fa a planetarium, so he's a, an administrator of a planetarium, and he's a public science communicator. He does have a scientific background, but as far as I know, he's not really working in in the, the sciences in that way anymore, and that's fine, actually. Totally fine. No problem. But there, that's not a dig at anybody. But I, I do think that if you asked Mr. Tyson, 
uh, how does peer review work? He'd be able to give you a couple sentences that anybody could understand about how it works. Yep. <laughs> it would be overgeneralized because he's as, as, as well, he should be. He knows he's talking to a large audience of lay people, mostly people who are interested in the sciences, but you know, they, they're not going to that. Like it's a fucking scientific journal. It's a podcast. It's supposed to be entertaining and informative. So no problem there. Yep. Whereas Eric, by contrast, knows enough to think he's right. Well, Eric, I think also has, Eric also is a fucking delusional individual. Yep. I think he believes that he knows not because he's done the work or anything. Cause who would, who would, who has the time? It's because he himself is Eric is what I think. Like he wouldn't say that, but that's you. At some point you have to draw that conclusion. There's no other conclusion to draw about him after all these years. Um, are you sure that tracks? Cause he is the most humble man in the world. Well, to be, to be fair, you had to get rid of that little tiny sign because your new <laughs> spot, I don't know. You just didn't put it up. This uh, is, the awards for this year haven't been, haven't been announced yet. So he'll probably win again this year. It's a, he's a shoe in. Yep. He also invented shoes. Oh, Sir Arthur Eddington, uh, using the 1919 total solar eclipse, um, to prove that Einstein's theory about uh, a star warping space, in, the, in particular our sun, uh, appear to be borne out. Um, Neil claims that that was sent to a peer-reviewed journal, whereas peer review doesn't really begin in physics uh, and in the sciences really until the 60s and much more the 70s. So it's very interesting because Neil himself doesn't Wait, what? appear. I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's true. I would, I, I would be hard pressed to, I don't, maybe the formalized process as we know it today yeah. didn't exist until like after, basically after World War II, but some version yep. of it had to exist. Otherwise, how the fuck did we nuke Japan? So peer review as a concept existed prior to like the formalized peer review process we have now. Yeah, it was like, hey, there were journals that would would you take a look at this? Yeah, and there there were journals that would uh, publish scientific discoveries prior to you know the the current set of journals. Right. That and 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 prior to the fifties, like he's. He's just wrong here. Uh, like they may not have been called, you know, scientific journals at the time. Um, and a lot of science was published uh, outside of them. So they weren't like a, a formalized part of the scientific method at the time. But, uh, you know, saying they didn't exist at all is just wrong. <clears throat> yeah, the, the idea that nobody was checking anybody's work beforehand seems kind of silly. Yeah, and I I don't know about this particular case if that actually did go through uh, a peer review process before it was published, or uh, you know he might be right about th- that particular but that's not experiment, the claim, but he's the not claim right is, the about claim, the, the claim. HK is that there was no yeah. peer review until the '60s or the '70s. Well, he's saying there was no peer reviewed journals. Conversant in the history of science, and, and he's he's just wrong. Isn't the reality of all science a bit like with medicine that a lot of very smart people take a a look at a lot of available data, but maybe not enough to reach absolute definitive conclusions, and they espouse theories which their peer group then look at and discuss and analyze and argue about. And that's how we progress with science over decades, centuries, and so on. I mean, isn't isn't this part of the evolution of science? is that people like you and Neil deGrasse Tyson might vehemently disagree about stuff. Right, but they're neither. But the, prob- the problem with that is that they could do that on a podcast, but neither of them, Neil, Neil, Neil Tyson, because he's busy running a fucking planetarium and like being a science communicator, and Eric, because I don't know, he's a crackpot who works for Peter Thiel, neither of them are actually <laughs> going to be involved in this process. Yeah. And that's fine for Neil Tyson and for Eric, but seems, seems like a bit of a problem. <laughs> I think also it's funny that he's he's saying doesn't science work like medicine and then he described like scientific medicine like yeah. medical science like sure. that that is a kind of science 
Right. But I mean, the, 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 I'm, <clears throat> I don't want to pick apart. I like, I hate picking apart this stuff kind of pedantically like that. Um, I know you're a big fan of it, but I, I personally don't like it because I receive emails about it. <laughs> and it's usually not me doing it. Um, and they usually say, what kind of scientist is the person who said this? And I'm like, well, that wasn't me. I don't know. Here's his email address. No, I don't do that. I delete the email. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> but um, like, sure, the evolution of the process that we go, go through to learn what's true has included more rigorous peer review over, over time. That's fine. If the fact that he said science like medicine, I mean, Piers, Piers isn't claiming to be a scientist, right? He's a fucking jackass okay. with a fucking <laughs> show, much like myself, but I'm cooler than Piers Morgan, but he's richer than me. My boyfriend's hotter than his wife, though. But actually, it's only <laughs> through the disagreements you, you, you develop. Well, but I doubt that he would agree to a program um, where we were going to have a discussion about this. Uh, my guess is that you reached out to him and that he uh, was too busy to appear. My claim is, is that in general, we avoid dust-ups um, for fear of looking foolish. And I think it's fine to avoid dust-ups when you feel that there's an ethical problem with the other person. But in general, science progresses by a large variety of different channels. Uh, Benjamin Jesty famously observed that his milkmaids weren't dying from sm uh, smallpox, but they did get cowpox. So he in injected his entire family with cow pus to give them cowpox to prevent against smallpox. It's one of the mm -hmm. beginnings of vaccines. People would dig up bodies from graveyards to do anatomical studies. Famously, the, uh, the ulcer, which was thought to be correlated with stress, uh, was tested by the uh, dissenting heterodox uh, biomedical researcher uh, and shown to have a completely different etiology by using. So, this is funny that he's like retconning this, right? Like, <clears throat> people used to think that ulcers were caused by stress, but it turns out there's a bacteria that tends to cause ulcers. It could be like exacerbated by stress because stress does weird things to your body. Now, Eric's claiming that the, the people, he's going to say one person, right? Because he's one of these great men of history motherfuckers. This was the people who figured this out. <clears throat> this was within my lifetime too, by the way, that this was just, this was uh, determined or uh, accepted as, as a fact. Now he's trying to ret like retcon and say that they were outside of the scientific method or outside of the scientific community. Yet mm -hmm. when they discovered this, everybody was like, oh shit, you're right. Yeah. Like he's describing actual science here, right? Like, like he's literally saying, these are the kinds of things that science isn't isn't doing and then describing all of the things that science has done. Right. It's also, uh, these is, if you notice when he talks about it, it's always one person, usually a man who did it. And if this happened in my lifetime, whoever did this was a team. There was a, there was a team, especially something like this. It was probably fucking dozens of people on the team inside. And then, you know, the ring out from that was probably hundreds of people working on like stuff in this area to figure this out. But I bet it was like some Probably, white guy yeah. who put his name on it. And Eric's like, well, that's the guy who did it. He's a heterodox. He's like, he's a rebel. <laughs> Himself is a guinea pig. I think that you have to understand that just as uh, Benjamin Franklin took a kite uh, and key into an electrical storm to prove that lightning was electricity, um, people have done all sorts of things that have nothing to do with learned societies. And the so that story could be apocryphal. That could be, that could be a. But that might not be a true story. <laughs> I, I would highly doubt that that story is true. Yeah, there might he might have got fucking electrocuted <laughs> like by his kite <laughs> and then figured it like. But I think that also there were probably people like the thing that happens here too is there might have been somebody in fucking China or at the time I guess Persia or you know somewhere where people aren't white where they figured that shit out that it was electricity. Uh, but I don't know the fucking, they give, the, they give the credit to Ben Franklin because he was drunk and flying a kite in the fucking storm. It's like, oh shit, it's windy time to go fly the kite. Grab, grab the, grab the liquor. Hopefully this doesn't go, make me go blind. I think a lot of times too, uh, I don't know if it's the case here, but people come up with like thought experiments and then other people think that they're like real experiments. Right. You know, it kind of just becomes like a legend uh, you know, the legend of this experiment. And it's like, no one ever actually ran that experiment. It was just a thought experiment. Sure. Or again, like 
you know, it, this is this is the functional equivalent of the George Washington chopping down cherry trees and shit. Like, yeah, like, like, no, probably not, dude. Teal um, sort of feel afforded by peer review uh, it, to, in order to advance science. I really think that in part what we've done is we've sanitized our own history. and We've forgotten what works. What was interesting to me was. Uh, yes, famously, nothing works like that movie Brazil. Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't go on Joe Rogan to respond, which is what Terence Howard wanted him to do. But, but you did. And here's a clip from that. This is the other side of it. Yeah. That would make a cool lamp. Eric's right. <laughs> <laughs> right? If that was made out of crystal or something with, a, with a, not even a super bright light in the middle of it, that would make like a super cool <laughs> lamp. Sure. Were you ever to, with us to that place on Campbell <laughs> Avenue? It was called like the light something or whatever. And it was bright as fuck in there, but all those lights were hell of cool. Were you ever to that place with us drunk one night? Or, I mean, if you were, maybe you don't remember it because we were, yeah, I don't remember it. We were a problem on Campbell Avenue. It's a good thing. The police <laughs> leave people alone there. This is, this is what, what is in, what's very interesting. Like these, they'll come together and meet. You can see where they meet up. Yeah. In They're case you're listening yeah. to this and not viewing it, <laughs> he's got these like what look like what would you do? Like kind of lo- like those connects toys yeah. that yeah, that's a good kids game. would play with. He's got those and they they're made into like these shapes and they've got like little uh Fins, protrusions man. sticking out of them and he's connecting like two of them together. <laughs> yeah, and but like again, they would they would just make a beautiful lamp. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Now this one looks exactly like this one, but they don't have the same mixture. Well, that's so- because that toy is from a different manufacturer, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> they're not they're non-interoperable uh, toys. <laughs> what this is creating, this is actually it's like showing- when you bought when you bought Legos and Duplos and they didn't fucking fix together. What was no Duplo was big Lego. You bought the Lego brand and then you bought the generic ones and they just didn't fit. This is the equal and opposite. This is a- this is matter. This becomes the antimatter. I can't of stop it. you doing that. You can't stop me. I'm I so know. sorry. I'm, I'm but Eric. I'm this is how different. How is this different than the fucking thing with the toilet paper roll, the rubber band, and the fucking pen? Like, how is this different? Right. I mean, this is more expensive, <laughs> I suppose. But nobody understands yeah, what the to, fuck he's saying. He had to go to Target to get that. Ooh, I bet he ordered them. My own worst enemy and my own best friend. Mm, you know what? That that was a beautiful statement. But the tr- what, I, what the I'm fuck? trying to say is the fact that they keep and these four will keep. This is just the magnetic. What I consider the magnetic field. You see, you stopped yourself. I consider. I, really I consider that. this to be the magnetic field. God, this. I, now I now I wish we could watch this on stream. This is. I would watch the whole fuck. This would be great. This would be great to. I would fuck it. I wouldn't even smoke any weed. I'd sit here stone cold sober watching this. I mean, if you turn the VOD off, could you watch it? No. Not because they're okay. expanding at the center and magnetism to we'll do it on your channel. language. Magnetism <laughs> expands out and becomes greater. And you know when you just said, in my language? In my language. That's what I just did with the Terrence product. In magnetism words, expands out and becomes greater? Is that what he said? Yeah, that's, that is false. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely. Because otherwise, if that became the case, then anything magnetic would just be stuck together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like two magnets don't pull each other together unless they're like close enough. What the fuck is he talking about? Right. That's you. You know. You notice how it's easier to keep two magnets apart because you don't even really have to touch them if they're far enough away than to try to pull them apart. Yeah. <laughs> I touching. mean, magnetism does spread out infinitely, but like with the inverse square law. So like. If you are, uh, you know, one foot further away, you're like one over whatever squared or, uh, you know, the, you're much weaker each time you, you go further. If you're like at X distance, then two X distance is like nine times sure. weaker or something, something like that. I, yeah, I can't sort of like exactly. the, sort of like the opposite of how earthquakes work, how it's like 10 times actually every time you go up like one point or whatever on the Richter scale. It's like the opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to piss them off. I, I want friends. I need friends. Now, the interesting thing to me is, as we would say in the UK, it sounded to me like he was talking a load of old cobblers. Um, 
And yet you were there and you were being very generous and sort of reasonable and... Um, well, that's, you know what, that's, that's because Eric doesn't really like it if somebody asks him difficult questions. So then he wouldn't have much of a leg to stand on if he went in there and was like, this is all bullshit and you're crazy. Because now, what is he going to say when somebody tells him that about himself? So he, like, had to go in there and, like, because also, like, again, Eric is not, um, Eric is not a person without his own crackpot theories about uh, physics, for example. Yeah. So physics and the the scientific community, right? Decent with him and allowing him to continue with his theories. That's attracted for you a lot of criticism. That by by engaging in that manner with him, um, you're kind of adding legitimacy to slightly unhinged science fiction. Right? Yeah, except that Eric can't really add legitimacy to any kind of science thing. He can add viewers to it, but that's different. Yep. Um. And, and, you know, I, I mean, if I was talking to that guy, I don't have like a, I think my scientific background is probably equal to Terrence Howard's and that's uh, very little, right? Just, I'm somewhat scientifically literate and I understand like the scientific process to some extent, but I, I don't actually make de declarative claims about science on this show because I am not a scientist and I don't have the background to do it, but I could talk to him and be polite and be pretty clear with him that I think what he's saying is, uh, cuckoo birds. I talked to that guy who believes he talks to ghosts through a track phone. Nicest guy in the world. I had a great fucking conversation with him. We were fucking totally polite to each other. And it was, you listen to that over and over again. You won't hear me agreeing with him or like even saying that, like I thought what he was saying was interesting, but in a, in a different way, like you can be, you don't have to go in there and call somebody a dumb fuck to, you know, make it clear that you think they're a dumb fuck. Rather than promoting the cause of science. How do you respond to that? Well, first of all, uh, you know, this is always a scuttlebutt and, you know, people say, so I'm not very impressed with that. I would say that, okay. you know, you have, um, I wouldn't say it's mildly unhinged. I would say it's wildly unhinged. Right. A lot of this stuff is just nonsense. Right. Did, but did you say that during the interview? Because you can be polite and you can be like, I think a lot of what you're saying is nonsense. Right. Like, yep. He said that about like the the one times one equals two thing, and then he didn't say it about like when he was saying all of science is is terrible and you know everyone else is wrong and I'm right because like you know Eric wouldn't say that that all of science is is not terrible. Eric agrees that all of the scientific community is like terrible and out to get specifically people like him. I think he's mostly mad that this dude did his grift better than him. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right on the other hand i was very quick to spot something that I, I wouldn't have been able to appear with terrence if i didn't think there was something in what he was doing and because i have a lot of uh, background and experience in this era area it, it was possible in being a crackpot you certainly do <laughs> yes yes you are you have been dethroned fortunate well i don't know is terrence howard nicer than him i'd probably rather hang out with terrence howard he starts talking to me that gobbledygook. I'd be like, do you have more cocaine? <laughs> He'd be like, I don't actually do cocaine. I'd be like, fuck, what am I doing here? Eric would be like, I do. I don't even use it, but I have it around so that people like me. I'd be like, okay, now, now it's really time to go. <laughs> to go through what he said at a speed that I think very few people would be able to go through his work. But what percentage, so for Eric, example what percentage of what he was saying was true or at least vaguely sensible and what was completely very little <laughs> zero right, so, so my question if it was genuinely very little him getting tens of millions of views for espousing complete nonsense in the main and then someone yeah. with your pedigree and your knowledge of this <laughs> <laughs> i told you pierce was going to be all the way up eric's ass <laughs> yeah your pedigree yo dude listen Usually when I'm like, oh, somebody's a talk show host or whatever, and that's a fine thing to be. This guy works for Peter Thiel, and that is not a fine thing to be. Nope. Eric Weinstein is definitely a piece of shit. Right. He is. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think he I don't think he has any interest in advancing science. I think he only the only interest he has is in, is advancing his own notoriety and the perception that he is a misunderstood genius. Yep. I think that's all that he cares about 
it's it's been made i i try not to get into people's heads too much but if in this case it has been made abundantly clear that that's what yep. he cares about he cares about the perception that he is like fucking galileo and shit he even joined the thing called the galileo project where these people were all comparing themselves to galileo <laughs> and it's like yo <laughs> they did have they has the church thrown you in a fucking box also like have they have they invented anything that's actually caused them to be like persecuted or right. like discovered anything that's like no they they're laughed at but that's not the same thing as persecution the focus on ridicule yep right there's a cottage industry of people that make fun of eric i am uh, one night a week part of that cottage industry of people that make fun of eric I'm maybe not the best at it, but I'm, you know, we're, we're getting there. Subject matter going on and kind of going along with engaging him as a serious person in these, in these things. Well, is is just, that not in its own way diminishing science when you do that? First of all, I wouldn't have had Terrence on the first time because it didn't do him a service to what he actually is doing that's interesting. Look, yeah. What is that? Uh, the fucking the, the fucked up part about this it's getting lost here is that Terrence Howard's a fucking brilliant actor just absolutely like I, you know I, I was not super familiar with his work until I realized that I was he's one of those actors hmm. that you don't really notice that he's in the movie because he's a good actor so you're not like oh that's Tom Cruise right do you know what I'm saying okay where he was in, he's been in a couple, he was in this one movie about this person who was, um, uh, the movie was, oh, it was so good. I forget the name of it where the, 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 the protagonist was, they didn't say he was a Scientologist, but all indications were that the protagonist was a Scientologist and something happened mm -hmm. and the guy was going to jump off of a building and Terrence Howard was the, the negotiator that went up to talk to him. And it was just, it, it was one of those kind of slow burning things like movies where it was a lot of dialogue, but it was fucking good. And it couldn't have been good if those two people were not good actors because it would have sucked, mm -hmm. right? Like if a, if a movie's conversational and the people in it can't act like they're having a conversation, the movie's hot garbage, right? So, yep. then, but I just looked up his, his uh, fucking IMDb. I'm like, holy shit, he's been in everything. And I'm like, I remember him in that now. I remember him in that now. Very good actor. And this is, this is fucked up. I feel like, I feel like a lot of these people are actually taking advantage of this guy and like what appears to, what appears to be like a targeted individual, like paranoia that, that he has in addition to like some weird ideas about science. And I think it's pretty fucked up actually that all these fucking talking heads are sort of uh, parading this guy out for everybody to see. I, I think it's fucking wrong. I think Joe Rogan is certainly taking advantage of him. Absolutely. Eric, but Joe Rogan is also a piece of shit. Yeah. Give him this amount of air that that was a good friend of mine's choice. Mm. So partially what you're seeing is a relationship between a comedian, Joe Rogan and a mathematician, Eric Weinstein. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so um, Joe Rogan is not a comedian anymore. He is a talk show host. And again, generally a fine thing to be. Eric is not a mathematician anymore. He is a venture capitalist, or I don't know if he even does that anymore. I mean, when we looked up his net worth, it was, we were, we saw numbers anywhere between 15 and $50 million. Even at the low end, that's the, I don't really have to do anything. I don't want to do ever in my life kind of money. Yep. So what now? <laughs> Mine. And, uh, he matters to me. And he, he's the one who asked me to come on. Mm. It's, uh, you know, it, some people tried to frame it as if I wanted to go on. I had no interest in going on. Oh, but bullshit. If we were going to watch a mass delusion take, take shape. Mm. Um, certainly, I don't want to, I don't want any more mass delusions. And I also don't want the idea. Well, you don't want, you don't want any more mass delusions started by anybody but you and your brother. Yeah, he wants his own flavor of mass delusion. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> once these ideas are out there that science is afraid somehow to confront, you know, uh, Terrence Howard's new theory of arithmetic, he doesn't have a new theory of arithmetic. Yeah, but that's like me being afraid to confront like fucking 
you remember that truth cat radio guy who had like a phone server for his podcast mm-hmm. and that would be like me being afraid to confront his newfangled method of broadcasting where you called into like a fucking 1987 radio shack answering machine with a fucking <laughs> party line on it <laughs> <laughs> but like how does eric not see that he is describing himself here like just as much terrence howard he's describing himself right because he wanted people to come debate him about geometric unity and everybody was like no we're we're still laughing at you actually <laughs> remember when he yeah. said when the scientific community responded immaturely <laughs> do you remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man imagine a bunch of fucking poindexters just dunking on you relentlessly that must suck <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could always just say like, oh, you know what? I was wrong. And they would stop. Right. But Eric has too much pride for that. But he needs to be the adult. I mean, too much humility for that. He's the most humble. Theory of arithmetic. And somebody needs to be the adult and say, uh, this is not right. On the other hand, you have to appreciate that all it takes is one great idea uh to move the world and a lot of bs is going to be forgiven and then so this is again this great man of history and i do mean man the this has been i i just struggle i struggle with this i don't think are there individuals who have moved the course of history in this history of science forward sure but in the modern age it's so much it's almost impossible for it not to be a group of people because everything has yeah. gotten so complex that you just can't do it by yourself anymore. And that's fine too, actually. <laughs> like, this is not a problem. Yeah. Working with other people is good, actually. And also the kind of things that we are are discovering now, like we haven't discovered anything along the lines of like relativity in the past, you know, hundred years or whatever, because we've gotten things like pretty close to as like pretty close to very accurate, you know, like obviously there's more than what we know because like relativity and quantum dynamics can't coexist in the same universe. So like one has to be like a generalization of the other in some way or one's just incomplete or something. Yeah. But like, you know, one person isn't going to come along and, and fix that. Most likely, most likely it's going to be a team of a hundred people or like, you know, a community of thousands of people all working on the same problem or maybe not even all working on the same problem in the, 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 the body of their work on different problems might lead another team of people to be like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But Eric thinks he did that though, actually. Or he thinks he may have, and that other people are just unwilling to investigate it, which is wild. Yep. But yeah, this is so. And the other thing is, I don't know, like packet switching, packet switching might be at the level of like, as far as utility for the the world, it might be at the level of relativity. It just depends on what do you think is important, right? Like, what do you think is crucial? What do you think is yeah, that's like invention versus discovery, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And so like I, I'm just like wondering like what is like who knows? And the other thing is I'm not sure that like the stuff about relativity, like that parts of it didn't already exist anyway, or that the majority of it didn't already exist and Einstein and his team may have synthesized a bunch of other people. Like they're not stealing it, right? Yeah. Because that's what you do. Einstein was working on like previous previous work um he was the first person to to make the that breakthrough and publish it but he wasn't the only one working on the problem and he wasn't he wasn't the only one that had made progress on it right and the ingredients of it certainly some of it came from elsewhere yeah it's like saying i invented a cake but actually somebody else invented flour and chickens invented eggs and he has a great (laughs) idea i would suggest to you it's likely his concept of a six rotor uh, drone called, that he calls the linchpin that's based on a mathematical error where he's fit uh, six um, pentagons 
uh, through the edges of a regular tetrahedron, giving him six degrees of freedom, which span uh, what we would call the Lie algebra of the affine group, giving him the ability to rotate around a, a center and move to any point in three-dimensional space. So here's one of the things that he does, and a lot of these people do, is he knows he's talking to a lay audience, and so he will just say yep. some shit that sounds all fucking science, science-tastic, but he knows it's for a lay audience, and they'll be like, whoa, this guy's blowing my mind right now. But what they're really thinking to themselves, if they're being honest with themselves, most people are like, what the fuck is he talking about? And that's fine, yeah. because you don't have to know like all of those terms. You don't have to know what that means. And that's why it's so important <clears throat> to be able to spot like the patterns of like charlatanism, because otherwise you're going to be spending fucking 27 hours out of your 24 hour day trying to fact check everything weirdos like Eric Weinstein is saying. Yeah, either he's being purposefully obtuse or he's just an incredibly dismal science communicator. And I would bet like probably a thousand dollars on on the former. Yeah, see, even Gorka is like, what does that mean? It's an incredibly yeah. cool idea. Now, I don't know that it's his. I believe that it's his, but I don't know that. I haven't done that work. I'm not a drone operator, so I don't realize, you know, what the state of the art is. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> but that's different. So, okay, so we started out with like a drone with six rotors. Those exist, I'm sure. I don't know if there's ones with four and ones with eight. There's ones with six. I don't know. The other thing he yeah, was it's called talking a about. Helicopter. Yeah, I don't, I don't, sure. I don't, the other thing he was talking about, I don't fucking care. I don't know. I fucking I had a really fancy drone and I sold it because I was afraid it was going to crash at the end. And that that was the only thing that he did and that he figured out that these things could fit together as per the Intel drone shows to form uh, capsids in the shape of dodecahedrons, much the way we see viruses uh, doing that with capsimere. So is he just talking about like attaching 12 drones together? Like yeah, you can make a you could like you can make a, a hexacopter that's like a hexagon and attach 12 of them together, but like why? Gravity only works one way, like towards Earth, towards the I mean, obviously if you get out in space it works differently, but there's no air in space, so you can't fly around there. <laughs> so like why would you need a a drone that would like operate in in like all these different degrees of freedom. It's like, you don't need a drone to fly down. You just stop flying and you go down. Yeah. I don't even know if that's what he's talking about. That's the problem is he's such a bad communicator. Yeah, true. <laughs> and I, I think, I think there's a, I, if I had to guess he's done it on purpose before and it's become habit now. Possibly. Yeah. But I don't know, but it's like, what he's trying to like, See, like that, there's some ambiguity in what he's saying, but that's great because later you can come back and he'll be like, that's not what I was talking about. And he'll be like, all right, thanks. Coats to, to protect the genetic material. That would be an incredible contribution of Terrence Howard. And it would be, sure, if anybody knew what the fuck you were talking about. It's me is watching my colleagues make fun of Terrence. Oh, that's why he, ah, there we go. That's the fucking, that's the fucking, that's the thing. He's like, uh, they make fun of him just like they made fun of me. So he must be onto something. You know, it's like we're yep. catching flack because we're over the target. It's that thing, right? <laughs> it's like, well, you're catching flack because I guess you stayed over the target too long, friend. The idea is you drop the bomb and get the fuck out. <laughs> Easily where he is right as where he is wrong. It doesn't require that. He's clearly a self-taught guy. He pronounces words like canonically, canoniacally, which indicates that he's teaching himself. And for all of this talk of the Neil deGrasse Tysons, where they say, I'm so pleased to see active minds engaging with the world of ideas, they're, they're really not. And, you know, my feeling about this is pretending. Are they not? Howard is I feel cool. like they are. How is he just like placing intentions into their brains? I think what he means is, <clears throat> you know, like when a science communicator is like, oh, it's really great that you all are interested in this, right? It doesn't mean that they, that the, the science communicator thinks that all of a sudden those people are going to be doing like uh, scientific research at the level of, I don't know, like a university or whatever. It just means that it's great that people are interested in this uh, for like good societal reasons. People are interested in science and technology. They might be more willing to uh, vote for politicians who are going to fund that kind of research. 
They might be more willing to mm. vote for politicians who would specifically fund NASA, that kind of stuff. So that's why. Yeah, I mean, it would be like if like a like a, a little kid comes up to you and says, "Hey, I've got this idea," and then explains this thing that's like very clearly wrong, and you just say like, "Well, that's." that's not exactly right. And you explain why, but then you go, but I love that you're thinking about this stuff. Like you're not taunting the kid. You're not, you're not even lying. Like that's true. You are glad about that. And I'm not trying to like say that Terrence Howard has the intellect of a little kid. That would be insulting to little kids. Well, you didn't watch any of the source material to be fair. What? The, what am I feeling about the this? original thing? You didn't even know that there were two of them, so you like I, I didn't. I watched only parts of the second one. Never watched the first one. So it's pretending that Terrence Howard is a fool or an idiot. Um, is is Republican? Well, he is a fool and an idiot, though. Like people have explained to him why he's wrong, and he refuses to admit that he's wrong. And he'll say things like, oh, well, that's just a metaphor. And then he'll go right on saying that, that, that it's true. And it's like, okay, well, clearly you don't think it's a metaphor. So like either you don't know what the word metaphor means or you're just lying. So I think there's something else going on here. I think, I think Terrence Howard is a few tacos short of a combo play. And I think a lot of people are just taking advantage of him and holding him, yeah. holding him up like some kind of freak show, honestly. I think that's what's going on. I mean, on. yes, but that doesn't mean he's not an idiot. You just take what he said about tones in the periodic table. Uh, because of uh, some good fortune in my life, I was able to go out to none other than one of the greatest musicians now living, Stanley Jordan, mm -hmm. and say, Stanley, um, you, you know, let's share your work on playing the periodic table by using the ionization energies as frequency information, much the way Terrence was discussing. So my feeling is, is that a lot of my colleagues just don't have enough knowledge. And even though they're supposedly the academics sitting in professorial seats, they're not behaving like professors. They're not. Ooh, now talk about your run-in with Billy Bragg. Like uh, academician. Another famous musician who Eric had a run-in with. Talk about that, Eric. They're making fun of somebody because it allows them to work out their own personal insecurities. And that's not going to happen on my watch. <laughs> it's, it's actually really fascinating because... So they're making uh, fun of someone mistake. because he refuses to accept that he is wrong. Right. Like, if, if he had just come out and said, hey, I think one times one equals two, and here's why. And then someone said, that's wrong, and this is why that's wrong. And if he was like, oh... Okay, never mind. No one would be making fun of him at all. No one would call him an idiot. No one would call him a fool. No one would be making fun of him. Like some people might say he's ignorant, which he would have been, but like we're all ignorant. He learned. And, you know, ignorant people, like it's fine to be ignorant, but like when you have the opportunity, go ahead and learn. Don't be a fool. Or just like understand like the limits of your own knowledge is like really important. That's why, again, I don't yeah. make, I don't explain science to people on here. I don't do any of that shit because I am uh, not the one. I'm just here to make fun of people who think that they know everything because I know that they don't. <laughs> Thank you. What you're saying is, look, you might be wrong about 99% of his stuff, but the 1% might be really significant, which is staggering to me that Terrence Howard has gone through life as a movie actor is suddenly doing stuff which is to you quite groundbreaking and yeah but pierce ask him what stuff well he's been explaining it and none of it is groundbreaking well but i don't think pierce is doing a good enough job of like trying to pin him down on it like what is he saying that's interesting and why is it interesting right like that's that is not coming up no but he's so far up eric's ass i think that's no. part of the problem very complex world of science and mathematics and so on. It's not in science and it's not in mathematics. Right. If he's doing something that I recognize, it's in engineering, art, and it's possible that he's doing something, you know, I, I was able to recognize where his shapes come from, where Neil does not appear to understand, which is fine. Um, so, you know, th there's some very beautiful geometry but it doesn't appear to me to be at a research level. And I no, because the, it's not a re because the shapes he had already exist. <laughs> like, yeah. You could get a toy with them, friend. A toy's like ages seven and up. 
but but he draws up such, such nice shapes and he turns them into toys I want to conflate well he turns toys yeah, into them i'm not being I'm, I'm hardly a pushover i'm saying he's wrong in chemistry physics and mathematics in mm. fact it doesn't rise to the level of a theory that needs to be actively considered that it doesn't said, rise to the level of third grade right it doesn't it's it, this this stuff is barely a hypothesis it's like the ramblings of a person who i think has whatever um <clears throat> whatever sort of I, I i hate this part i hate i he just he said some things that makes me think he's a ti like that he believes in gang stalking yeah. and i don't know what that's a uh, uh, like what that's downstream from like psychologically and i would be loath to speculate um but that's what i that's the thing that i noticed mostly outside of like because i'm not assessing any of these the claims and i think he's a lot like eric i think eric has that to a lesser degree though eric thinks everybody's out to get him too but i don't think he thinks people are like tapping his phone and shit to dismiss everything he's saying because we can find uh you know sometimes a fly lands in your dish and you insist that it be taken back at a restaurant other times you just say you know five second rule you're hungry uh, and it's not the fault of the restaurant you're a you dick just, if a fly lands on your dish and you have them take it back <laughs> that's not what the five second rule means though yeah it's the ground right yeah so if your food falls on the ground you can pick it up within five seconds and the germs haven't been able to get to it or so i i don't know the it's just a dumb thinking behind it but like it's it's clearly wrong everyone knows that it's wrong it's just it's said as a joke right you know it's, it's because if <laughs> it's because a lot of us if we drop a piece of cheese on the floor we're just going to pick it up and put it on our sandwich because we're fucking gross <laughs> it's, that's just the way it is <laughs> i think that's the, yeah. that's there's no no nothing about the bacteria we're just nasty or our floors real clean no. <laughs> let it go and my feeling about this is um what neil did is really troubling what he did is is that he advertised a fake openness which is just submit what your work is to a peer-reviewed journal neil doesn't either doesn't know the history of peer review doesn't know why it's called peer review uh, has no concept of what peer review actually is, which is bizarre, or he does know, and he's deliberately going to waste Terrence Howard's time uh, because <laughs> Terrence is his peer. So, I'm sorry, on this matter, it's impossible to waste that guy's time. <laughs> the whole concept right. of peer review, it, the word peer isn't like a jury of your peers, your fellow citizens. It's like peers as in, ter in terms of the House of Lords. The whole idea of peer review is to well, no, it it's lazy. other experts in the field you're working in. What the fuck is he talking about? Right, you could just call it colleague review if if you wanted to like use a, a different terminology. It's your colleagues. Yeah, like if you are researching physics, it's other physicists. Right, your colleagues. Yeah, it's not going to be like you know you're you're researching physics and you have to like submit everything to to some like like supreme court of physics like what the fuck is he talking about and there is there is some level of like i guess elitism in there insofar as like i'm not going to peer review a quantum physics paper right because yes. they're not going <laughs> to accept me as a reviewer because i am a podcaster yes you are not an expert in the field right so there is some level of uh, elitism there but then eric thinks he knows everything so it kind of blows his fucking problem with that out of the water <laughs> <laughs> yeah like <laughs> but sure they could just change it to colleague review and then eric would be like oh colleague oh, spelled like colleges suspect <laughs> the, the the people who don't do science for a living or medicine for a living out of the review process mm-hmm and that's where yes that's, that's the fucking point it, of it yes correct colleague, correct eric colleague review yes yeah it's it's kind of like you know let's say for example you want to build an airplane should you hire engineers or should you hire random people off the street well more to the point should if you were to hire the engineer should you then have the uh, random people off the street check their work <laughs> right <laughs> yeah 
then again, point. it's fine to be a random person off the street. I am often that. Yes, but don't build an airplane if you're a random person off the street. Unless it's made of paper. And then Eric Eric is here saying, like, I know how to build all of the airplanes. Right. In fact, I've revolutionized airplanes. Doors don't even come off of mine. <laughs> Why it, it grew up in the 60s and 70s as peer review. It was, a, it was as part of a struggle where scientists wanted to wall off their kingdom and say, look, we are taking public money, but we don't want public review. You're not qualified to be here. Shut up. Get out of our uh, lab. Well, wait, what? The so, public review is it's like, it, it's, the journals are public, right? I, like, yes, the people reviewing stuff to go in the journals is not public, but once the journal prints it, it's public. Right, you may have to pay for it, or do the, you, you, may, you may not have unlimited access to all of it as an individual. Yeah, you gain access to it. In fact, a lot of times, if, you, if the thing isn't public or there's a paywall behind it, you just look at the first author, you find out their email address, you're like, hey, can you send me this paper? They're like, sure, I'll send you the paper. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, but yep. the, again, they don't want you and me reviewing like a, like, I don't, I don't even think I'm the, we're competent to review like a 12th grader's fucking physics homework, I don't think, right? Like, that's probably not that's why the fucking nope. teacher's there but that's that's but that's not colleague but also it'd be interesting if maybe at the higher levels even in high school if the students were reviewing their own work and i bet there's places where they are doing that because that's great probably uh that, that would be happening in what, what we would uh, call other countries probably <laughs> no but yeah you can't just do that because now you have now the fucking it's the the, the problem with, with that would be like the signal and the noise yeah, you'd be looking for the signal within like the people's like review of it or whatever. That's why like we also don't um <clears throat> now we we've democratized things that are similar to that like on Yelp you can go see what people think about a restaurant. But if you're like, well this is weird, and then you let, let me go look and see what the restaurant reviewers say and if that's dramatically different than what the people are saying, it may cause you to, to go to the restaurant or not go to the restaurant if you're trying to find a nice place. So, now mind you restaurant reviewers are punks mostly, but um, I'm just saying that like, this is, you can't, you can't just have like, again, like not being an expert in something is fine. Yeah. Also, he is wrong about even like the reviewers themselves, like the, so your, your peers are not like, they don't have to have, they don't have to be like from some family or they don't have to like pay into the process to, to get a seat, to be able to review. Like they are part of the public. Like they're not like, it's, it's not like a dynasty, you know, right. you're, you're not born into the peer review process. You earn your way there by merit. Right. And I mean, this is going to be fraught with issues of like uh, nepotism and other stuff, but that's just a function of the society we live in. Sure. To the same extent as a lot of other things. Yeah. That probably, we in, you know, probably in slightly different ways and, you know, whatever, because it, yeah. it's a different pr process. But sure, there's going to be problems. But the other thing is like, like if that's a problem, Eric wants to come in from on high and be the expert without having done the work here. And that's yep. interesting. Mind you, you yeah. don't have to be an expert to go in and tell a, tell a guy that one times one, uh, as far as we know, equals one, or that the periodic also, like, table if, isn't if, that the periodic table isn't like the um, isn't like a playing your scales on the piano. <laughs> yeah, but like, if no one is uh, taking you seriously, all you have to do is devise an experiment that proves you're right or shows you're right. Or that you know, shows that it's an experiment that right it would well the, the first one would show that you're potentially right yeah and then people will start taking you seriously but eric can't do that because he's not right and that's why it's so fiercely defended is because it's the last ditch effort to keep the laity from interfering in in matters that they can't understand all right well that's uh fucking we're about an hour and 20 minutes in and we got, Ooh, that's not, I thought we were only going to do like 15 minutes, but we got to 22 <laughs> minutes. We're going to watch the rest of this during the fucking post game for sure. This is fucking crazy. Um, I've been working on yep. not calling people crazy and calling, uh, ideas and behaviors crazy. This interview is crazy. This is crazy. Yep. I, 
<clears throat> I'm like, <clears throat> I don't like how far up Eric's ass Piers is because there's a certain way in which Piers Morgan can be kind of a jackass that would be pretty useful here where he could go, but you, sir, have a theory about physics that uh, other people think is incorrect. What is the difference here? Yep. Like, <clears throat> I wonder, though, I, I, we found out that Brett and Heather uh, have a writer. Like when they go on to talk about their book, that you are not allowed to ask them about their anti-vaccine bullshit. That you are, they, they, if you, <clears throat> like when you have, if somebody has them on to talk about their fucking touch grass book or whatever you they sign a contract that says they're not going to give them shit about like the stuff on their show i wonder if eric has a writer that he sends people that is like you are not to bring up geometric unity and the uh negative response of the scientific community to geometric unity he seems like that kind of guy yeah i'd say probably like i'd i'd bet on it we know that eric and uh or the brett and heather do because they uh somebody leaked it <laughs> so <laughs> Um, I forget where I forget who did it. It was like dur it was like during like 2021 or 2022, right when their book came out, where they were sending out fucking uh, where they were trying to get interviews with everybody about it. Would have been great if it would have been somebody like Michael Shermer or somebody could have could have gotten himself a little bit of a redemption, at least in the skeptic community. Oh, but it wasn't him. I forget who it was. It was some some fucking person that they thought wasn't going that the per to who and I forget who it was. I wish I remembered who it was because to their credit, they refused. And I forget okay. who it was. I, I, maybe maybe we can maybe we can find out. Maybe somebody in chat knows. You know who would know? Marcus, <laughs> homozygo. Marcus would know exactly who the fuck that was. Is <laughs> that we may be? I may be an expert on Brett and Heather, but not like Marcus is. So you know, we're definitely going to watch the rest of this, and um, <clears throat> I guess I'm inclined to give the show out as a freebie this week so that everybody can catch the uh, end of this. They can catch our scientific. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we're going to give this out as a freebie. You can get this, the, the whole show. If you want to catch the uh, post game, you can get it at patreon.com slash echoplex or at eplex.store. And it'll be there for free. But while you're there, consider signing up and uh, want to do the rest of the readout of the show. HK. All right. This has been the intellectual dollar tree. We do this show every Wednesday at 7 PM Pacific and sometimes 9 PM Pacific. If it's a little too hot outside, uh, and if you're listening to the podcast version, you can check us out live uh, at twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media, uh, where you can also view Red Light, our post game, our post show content, uh, which happens right after uh, we play the next song. So this is Boomers by Periscope. See you.